Welcome to my minivan studio in sunny and very hot Los Angeles. Um, before we get started and discuss a little bit about what exactly division is, let's start with a bit of what we can all get united on. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Daniela Bloom. I am one of Ellie's premier relationship authorities. I work with men and women, single, married, and divorced. I have my pulse on what ails modern day relationships, and now I've ripped off the band-aid, and now I'm applying what I know and what makes and breaks relationships today, and what is happening in the state of affairs of our country at large and around the world. Um, today. Okay. So I'm taking what I know as a psychotherapist. I am not a politician. I'm not a historian. I'm not an attorney, but what I'm interested in is the human story underneath the headlines, because I truly believe we are a lot more like than different. We're just going about in a lot of different ways to get our own universal human needs met, whether that's acceptance, security, freedom, we can relate to these universal human needs. So let's go. Okay, so let's define division. Okay, last week we defined unity. If you missed that and you're curious, find it on my Facebook. Um, it was last Monday. Okay, so this week we are talking about division. The action of separating something into parts. Disagreement between two or more groups producing tension and hostility. Okay. So how did we get here? We are all responsible for today's state of affairs. Oh, I love seeing everyone jump on. Hi everybody. Hi Gabriel. Um, we are all responsible for today's state of affairs. This is not a conservative issue. This is not a liberal issue. This is not a Trump issue. This is not any other issue other than we are all collectively responsible for how we got here. And we indeed are in a crossroads of division in many, many, many ways. Now, we have to get clear on that if we want these things to change, okay? We can't just see part of it and just blame the other people, right? I talked about last week, if you have two people in a relationship and they're like, our relationship would be great if only you would change, that's not a healthy relationship, right? Both people got here. It takes two to tango. So let's pull back the lens a little bit, okay? Why is there so much, so much mistrust in the media today? All media. All media. Why? Why? I mean, I had a good friend from college. She knows who she is. We were going back and forth uh, on social media this week, and we completely do not agree politically. And she said to me, Daniela, you should know me as an educated, um, someone who thinks constructively, um, individual. I don't know who you are. And I'm thinking, wait, first of all, we went to the same college and actually you do know me. You do know me to be very much the same. I'm educated. I'm a critical thinker and I like to hear all different perspectives, but we don't see eye to eye. It doesn't mean I'm less than her or she's above me. It just means that we might have a different perspective and we need different perspectives to make our country strong. And I can clearly see with what's happening in our country, the way we are going is perpetuating echo chambers. And that is concerning because a lot of conservative individuals and platforms are being imbalanced and unfairly censored. So they have in our free market and our abilities to be able to, to choose different platforms had essentially no choice but to create a new platform where they have free speech, they have free thinking ideas, and they don't have to fear censorship because after all, Facebook and Twitter are privately owned companies and they do influence a lot of people. So if you want to have, you know, if you, if there's, I don't know, a current pending investigation of sort that we're all waiting on and you want to share information and that's being censored, then it doesn't seem like it's a balanced, fair platform, which was originally created, social media, Facebook and Twitter were originally created as a platform for all different ideas, a way where we all could connect and contribute. 
And we know, I mean, I, I, I've seen myself a bunch of uh, free Palestine pages that incite tons of violence against Jews and Israelis. And those pages are allowed to stay on. So it seems like there's a lot of picking and choosing by Facebook and Twitter. So this is why conservatives have chosen to leave a different platform. Now, if conservative voices were more welcomed and represented, I don't know if CNN hired a conservative commentator, you know, if NPR, n n News Public Radio, would not make outlandish, compass, uh, outlandish claims right now of baseless evidence, baseless evidence, when they are the media, they are not the judge. And uh, right now, the jury is still out, literally. We will all find out together I know there have been some big claims being made on the Trump campaign, and those claims have to be backed up. A lot of practical people are waiting for the evidence, just like many of you are. So we will see. We will all see together in just a few weeks. I think December 8th and December 14th are the respective deadlines. We will all find out together. For anybody in the media to say conclusively that there is baseless claims is irresponsible and it's a turnoff and it makes over half of the American population mistrusting of what should be an open balanced platform. Um, okay, so with that said, um, if you guys want some examples as to why many um, conservatives and moderates are not mistrustful of the media and have issues with feeling balance and a lack of bias. Um, we can talk about the Brett Kavanaugh hearings where they like crucified him and then it went nowhere. We can talk about for four years, you know, Russia Gate, and, and, and $35 million later, uh, Trump was not found to have connections uh, with Russia. We can talk about um, many other examples that CNN seems to get away with. I mean, most recently, I don't know if you guys saw, but what uh, Amanpour was comparing the Trump candidates, the Trump presidency to Kristallnacht. I mean, unacceptable. Calling him a fascist dictator on CNN, uh, unacceptable, unacceptable. Um, New York Times this week had a crossword puzzle the shape of a swastika, I kid you not, and they get away with it. That is not how you breed trust and open discussion. Now think what you may, there's crazies on both sides, okay? There's bad apples everywhere. But we rely on our media to bring a fair and balanced perspective, not just some facts that are magnified, but all the facts. The whole story, all the perspectives. Um, so I want you guys to understand that that is where a lot of the division is coming from. It's just imbalanced. And I think all standards should apply to both sides equally, okay? When there is a mistake made, when there is a false story, when there is not the whole story, the right side needs to be called out also, okay? I am about holding the same standards to both sides equally, and unfortunately, that is not uh, what's happening. Case in point, the, the, the Million MAGA march in D.C. Tens of thousands of people from all over the country, all over the world, gathered in a peaceful rally in D.C. for Trump. The only violence that happened was in after hours from BLM and Antifa. Um, on mothers with their children, there were punches, there were fireworks thrown into re restaurants. And I'm not seeing that in mainstream media. I saw maybe one headline that said um, clashing with protesters, which implies that there were violence on both sides. And the only thing I do that has been brought to my attention is the media seem to zero in on one guy wearing like a white power shirt. Okay, one guy. Now remember, there are tens of thousands of people, blacks, Latinos, Asians, gay, Arab, Jew, women, right? But what the mainstream media is interested in to fit their narrative of we must all be white supremacists who support Trump, they're going to zero in on the guy with the white power shirt, right? Seems a little bit imbalanced. 
and biased. Okay. That's where the aggravation is coming from. So again, and also Mr. Biden, a uh, potential president elect, the jury is still out. Disclaimer, if it turns out to be Biden, I will accept him because I believe in democracy. I will get behind him because I love our country and I love our democracy. Okay. But Mr. Biden last week is talking about unity. It's time for unity. Has he condemned the violence against the Trump supporters the other day? Has he said all violence, including from the fanatical BLM supporters? Now, I'm not saying all BLM supporters are violent. I, I definitely am not saying that. I believe in everyone's right to peacefully protest. But it does seem that a lot of people who the violence is coming from come from Antifa and come from a handful of people from the BLM movement, which we know by the own creators are trained Marxist individuals who are leading this movement. Um, anyway, the point is all voices matter, all facts matter, and all, all inequality matters, okay? Everyone needs to be held accountable to the same standards. Um, apparently my phone got too hot and I had to cool it down. This is such a hot topic that even my phone couldn't um, handle it. So we have moved indoors. Let's have some compassion and understanding with where we are right now as a country that there is a lot of mistrust that has been created on both sides. Let's remember that we are all American citizens. We all have the same needs and wants. We all want to feel that our, our voices matter and that they're being represented fairly and equally. And I pray that we will find each other again. Um, and in the meantime, let's just remember that we are stronger together. And if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all right now. Okay? It's probably a better way to be.